<laughs> this is Gary Bartz. We're going to talk about sound. I know when I was working on sound, I would do all kinds of things. I would um, go out to the park. I know Farrell Saunders and I used to go out to the park and just play as loud as we could <laughs> because that, that's one way to open your sound because um, I, I do like playing in a house, so I like playing in, in a corner that with a concrete wall that it just bounces right back at you. You can hear every articulation. But when you're playing outdoors, it just leaves. So you have to work harder. And um, that, that's one of the things I used to do. One thing students, they'll ask me, well, I don't like my sound, you know. Well, I ask them, well, what do you want to sound like, you know? Um, because a lot of, lot of musicians, they don't know what they want to sound like, and they let the sound find them rather than them find the sound. You know, I knew what I wanted to sound like, so I had, I had a goal. You know, I had something to shoot for. I, I wanted to sound like a tenor saxophone um, when I wanted to, or whatever. I, you know, I wanted to sound like uh, Lester Young sometimes, you know. And actually, I heard him say the same thing, so that kind of confirmed the way I was thinking. But um, I, I tend to like tenor players who play like alto players, which I would categorize. John Coltrane was a tenor player. He played like an alto a lot. Hank Mobley played like an alto a lot. I like tenor, uh, alto players that play like tenor players, like Charlie Parker played. And, and it, they both did s switch. Uh, trains started out on alto, and Bird played a lot of tenor, so um, they knew the peculiarities of both instruments. That was the kind of sound I was shooting for. So I asked the student, you know, what do you want to sound like? You know, and so then they have to think about it. And once you, you, you know what you want to sound like, then you, you have something to shoot for uh, rather than just let the sound find you. Then sometimes that works out, you know. Um, I, like I, I listen to Lester Young. I, uh, nowadays, everybody I hear <laughs> sounds like Lester Young, especially saxophone players. I mean, he, he just gave the world so much. I call him the father of modern music. I mean, there was Louis Armstrong, and Louis played everything on the beat, or a lot of stuff was, was right on the beat. When Prez came along, he was off the beat. You didn't know where the rhythm was. And, and that, the young guys, they said, wow, I hear that. You know, so now you got on the beat and off the beat, so you got more to learn. I love uh, tenor players who are tenor players, like Sonny Rollins. He's straight up tenor player. Uh, Gene Ammons. Gene Ammons is straight up tenor player, but he plays just like Lester Young, but with the big tenor sound. Lester had more of an alto sound. And I'm sure all of these guys thought about how they wanted to sound because there's some, like Paul Quinnichet, he sounds just like Lester Young. I mean, sometimes if you really didn't know the two, you would think that was Prez playing rather than, as they call Paul Quinnichet, the vice Prez. Now that all comes into studying. So you study your history and you study your, your uh, recordings that you have, you see how the different people play. I mean, these are all the things I do. Music is, you, is if I ever hear anyone say, I don't know what to play or I don't know what to practice, uh, then you're not studying music because practice is not always just on your horn. You have to study music. You read biographies, you read um, uh, harmony theory books, you read scores, you know, this is studying the music. So in, in developing a sound, it's very important to um, figure out what you want to sound like and, and then go for that. At least you'll have a goal. You know, you may decide along the way, uh, I, don't, I want to do something else, but at least you have a goal rather than just let the sound come to you.